Hello, uh, my name is John Parent, and welcome to another edition of Frank and Mary. Normally, this program is hosted by Arthur Bergeron, who is a well-known local elder law attorney. Uh, but today, uh, Arthur's job uh, requirements uh, preclude him from hosting this particular meeting. So I've uh, been co-host for close to a year now uh, on most of the programs, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, host this one uh, by myself. Now, I'm very fortunate uh, today that we have a terrific guest. Uh, her name is Kelly Kalo, and Kelly is the Hudson Director of the Public and Community Health Department, someone who has been involved in the COVID-19 crisis right from day one. So, Kelly, it, it seems like we're finally uh, turning the quarter, corner, so I thought it would be timely uh, to hear what you have to say uh, about some of the changes. And before you do that, I did want to mention that I did talk to one of the members uh, of the Board of Health, Jay Murphy. And Jay went on and on about the numerous accomplishments that both you uh, and your department have had uh, over the past year. So I wonder if you could just take a moment and, and kind of touch on some of the accomplishments that you've had. Sure, I'd be happy to. Yes. Um, Normally, we, we love um, bringing in programs that support the town of Hudson. Um, with COVID-19, it's been really difficult for us to do the majority of that this year um, because the majority of our focus has shifted from our normal day-to-day -day operations to only focusing on COVID-19. However, we still love the town of Hudson and love bringing great programs to the town. So we did um, apply for a few different grants this year, and we've actually received five, a total of five grants. Um, so the, our first grant that we received is for a program called Emotional CPR. Um, that was from the Metro West Health Foundation. That was a $30,000 grant. Um, and that's doing trainings to multiple sectors in the town of Hudson um, to teach them how to respond to individuals who have an emotional crisis. So if you see somebody on the street that's going through an emotional crisis, which could be anything from crying and having a breakdown to having a really hard break. Um, it equips people with the knowledge in order to help them through that situation, to calm them down a little bit, and to hopefully get them some help. Um, so that was the first grant that we received. The second grant that we received um, was for COVID-19 capacity building. Um, with that grant, we were able to hire a community contact tracer. Um, we needed the support. We as I'm sure you all know we um, just passed our 1600 mark of COVID cases. We are currently at 1602 um, since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, so I couldn't do it alone. Um, we did hire a public health nurse and it was, she couldn't do it alone. So we really needed some assistance. Um, so that grant was to help us hire some staff to help us do the community contact tracing so that we um, knew exactly what was going on in our community at the time. The third grant um, was actually to support the emotional CPR training. Um, that was an additional money from Emerson Hospital to actually bring that training to youth. We found um, that youth are going through emotional crises right now, and it's a really tough time for youth in this environment. And so we're able to bring the eCPR program right to them. The fourth grant that we received um, is for substance misuse prevention. So currently we host um, something called STAPSI. So it's a substance abuse prevention coalition. That grant actually ends June 30th of this fiscal year. So June 30, 2021. So next year, next, next fiscal year, July 1st, um, we were gonna lose our substance abuse prevention specialist. Um, and that is a valuable program. I find that um, bringing substance misuse prevention to the town of Hudson surrounding communities to really engage um, our youth and to be able to prevent the misuse of substances is really important um, for not only the youth, but for our community as a whole. Um, so we received that grant and we are excited to have that grant that is $125,000 a year for up to eight years. 
So we'll be able to sustain that program for quite some time. Um, and then the final grant, actually, we just received word on Friday um, that we received the, a public health excellence grant. So what that grant is, is $300,000 a year for up to three years and may be renewed for additional years, um, but it's to support public health infrastructure. So we partnered with a bunch of different municipalities in the region, and we hope with this money, we are able to hire four staff people to assist with fill gap services to the region. So we'll be hiring a director, a public health nurse, a sanitarian slash health inspector, and an epidemiologist. Now that $300,000 isn't enough to bring those people on full time. However, we plan to seek additional funding to make those um, individuals full time. And Hudson is the lead municipality for that um, for that grant. And I'm excited that that Hudson continues to be a leader in public health. And those are some great accomplishments that we've made this year. Yeah, they certainly are. Uh, I know too, being on the board of selectmen, I appreciate uh, what it goes into uh, in writing some of these grants uh, as well. Uh, they're never easy and they're very stringent uh, once you get them uh, as to how you apply and, and actually utilize the, the dollars. Um, very interesting too that we always seem to talk about the physical uh, problems of COVID. Um, but another very real situation, of course, is that emotional, uh, mental uh, issue, the uh, feeling of isolation, uh, of not being able to communicate with uh, members of your family, like uh, grandparents to grandchildren, uh, being in the house uh, too much, not having that ability to be uh, free and out there, you know, and just kind of doing your thing. Um, so I'm glad to see that some of these grants, you know, are directed, you know, towards that as well. Um, you put out a, uh, is it a daily report that you put out, Kelly, and it shows the week to week? So we, we, we actually put out, um, at the beginning of the pandemic, we used to do a daily report and it quickly yeah. got very overwhelming. Um, yeah. for, for me, I think at the beginning of the pandemic, I was probably working 80 to 90 hours a week. Um, so I, I kind of cut back on that. So we do a weekly report. Um, so it goes out every Monday, um, yeah. and that shows our COVID numbers from the previous um, from the previous week on yeah. that Monday. We also just recently started putting out a report every Friday, yeah. which um, documents the vaccines. So who in Hudson has received a vaccine, and the percentage of the individuals and the age categories. Um, of who's gotten a vaccine in the town of Hudson. So that goes out every Friday. So we currently have two reports that go out, one every Monday, one every Friday. Okay, let, let me talk to you a little bit about the uh, report that you just put out. Sure. Um, and, and this is the one from Monday, April 26th uh, to Monday, May 3rd. And if you go back, if you go down to your weekly case counts, uh, there's really definitely a substantial or a significant drop in cases if you look at from mid-December uh, all the way through May 3rd. Now, I know that by and large, we're pretty much following the state uh, when it comes to what phase we're going to adopt and, and that type of thing. Could you explain a little bit about the... Uh, color coding. I know we're using uh, red community, yellow community, uh, and, and that um, would advise us and you uh, as to what phase uh, we, we might be entering into. So can you talk a little bit about where we're at uh, in relationship to the state and their guidance and what we should be implementing or continuing to implement? Sure. Um, so the, the state recently, um, so I know back, I think September, October, November, they were oh. huge into this color voting, right? Which made sense to some people, didn't make sense to other people. And it was just kind of just this map, right? So we would, I, I would joke and I would wear 
wear a red sweatshirt or a red shirt if we were in the red and during my meetings with other health directors in the region. Yeah. Um, so we, we're currently in the in the yellow um, and we, we might remain in the yellow for, for a while. However, I think the state has recently moved away from using that map as to define where somebody lays in the reopening. Okay. So they, uh, everybody in the state of Massachusetts is, is following the same reopening plan that the governor puts out. Um, so currently that, that map, what it used to relate to where you, where you fall in the reopening process is no longer the case. It's, you're going to follow this, this reopening process and that's just the way it is. Um, so we're currently following the same guidance as everybody else, which changes almost daily as it's been changing daily since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, but the governor is hoping to reopen everything by August 1st. And I hope at that point, um, we have a lot more people vaccinated in the town of Hudson. Yeah, uh, let's talk about vaccines for, for a minute here too. Sure. Um, when I got mine, and fortunately, uh, both my wife and I do have uh, both uh, of the Moderna shots. And initially we went online uh, and wound up going to Foxborough um, to Gillette Stadium and, and having it done there. It does seem unfortunately that the number of vaccinations that are being given uh, on a daily basis is starting to drop. Um, I don't know how Massachusetts is in relationship to some other states, but um, there seems to be um, a couple of groups uh, of individuals that one is thinking in terms of, well, uh, we don't know what the long-term results uh, of the vaccination is going to be. And I don't know how you really get assured of no negative results unless you wait 20 or 30 years before you get your vaccination. Uh, saying to me, that's about the only way you find out what the long-term results are. Uh, and the other, I think, simply seems to be uh, a reluctance um, to trust the government uh, or to trust vaccines in general. Uh, so what are you seeing in the, well, first of all, is it easier uh, today? I, I would think that it would be uh, from the ability to get an appointment. Uh, and what's the best way for those people uh, who are maybe in that 16 um, and, and older category that have not received a vaccination as yet? What's the quickest, easiest way for them to set up an appointment and get that vaccination? Sure, yeah. Um, so at the beginning of the vaccination plan, it was nearly impossible yeah. to get the vaccine. Yeah. People were waiting weeks. People yeah. were frustrated. They were anxious and i completely understand um unfortunately our hands were tied for the majority of the time especially when the governor cut off vaccines to the local boards of health our hands were really tied at that point um, which was unfortunate because we hosted a few clinics and we were really excited to bring um, the clinics to see the smile on people's faces when they came in for their first and second doses was just it filled my heart with joy um, to really touch home but yeah. the easiest way, and now there's a surplus of vaccines. Uh, the easiest way to get a vaccine, Marlboro Hospital actually has tons of appointments. Um, they have, I think they have the capability of, of vaccinating 500 people a day. They aren't nearly doing that. Um, so the easiest way is actually to go on to Marlboro Hospital. I recently just posted on our town website the information on how to sign up for Marlboro Hospital. It's so close, it's a 10 minute drive for most Hudson residents, if not less, um, to go over there quick, easy, or in and out in 20 minutes with the uh, observation time for most people. Um, so that is the, the easiest way. They have both Pfizer and Moderna, so they are capable of giving the vaccines to anybody over the age of 16, and hopefully soon anybody um, over the age of 12, because Pfizer is looking yeah. at, um, decreasing their age categories, so bringing it down to 12 years old, 12 to 15. Um, so hopefully they'll be able to vaccinate 
12 to 15 year olds at that point. Um, they also, Melbourne Hospital just announced today, and let me get up the email so I can give you the most accurate information. Um, they just increased their hours and they're accepting walk-ins. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, appointments are available by booking online and walk-ins are welcome from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Tuesday and Thursday, appointments are available by booking online and walk-ins are welcome from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, their clinic is located at the Marriott Courtyard um, in, in Marlboro. So they are making it really accessible for people to get the vaccines. You don't even need an appointment. You can just walk on in. Yeah. Um, so that, that's great news for the town of Hudson and it's so close to home. So that's the easiest and best way to get it. Yeah, yeah, that is that is the best way then. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't realize they were taking walk-ins. Um, Just that, recently. That, that, that's a big, uh, big step towards when I was first looking, uh, trying to get an appointment mm -hmm. uh, and getting on the phone or looking online and trying to figure out how to do it. So uh, that that's a whole lot better than uh, where we were a number of months ago, that's for sure. Um, it does look like other states um, are, are starting to open up a, a little bit quicker uh, than Massachusetts. I think you've got New York, Connecticut, uh, and I think New Jersey uh, are, are going to be opening up uh, probably mid-May. Um, I, I see nothing wrong with, you know, we've gone so far uh, being cautious. You know, I'm certainly in agreement with uh, waiting you know, a little bit longer uh, and being a little bit more careful about it. Would you agree with that? Yes. Um, so at, at this point, so every Friday I um, update our vaccination report. And at that time on Friday, only 34% of our population is fully vaccinated. Oh, yeah. So that's not herd immunity at this point. That 54% had received at least one dose. So that yeah. means they're on their way. But with only 34% being fully vaccinated, that's not quite herd immunity. That's not enough people that we can safely open up to where we used to be and consider ourselves in the new normal. Um, mm -hmm. So I completely agree. I think being cautious, I, it's just a little bit longer. I know that everybody's mental health um, may be suffering. And I, I think that we're gonna, see mental health problems, behavioral health issues after COVID for quite some time. And that's just the next phase of our COVID-19 response. But um, if we hold on for just a little bit longer, I think we'll be um, in better standing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I've been under the impression listening to uh, the Dr. Fauci uh, types uh, that what we really need to, the, where we need to be is somewhere around that 70 uh, 80 percent uh, in order to have that, quote, herd uh, immunity. Um, but I think as, as a state, if we continue to be cautious and continue to increase the number of vaccinations, uh, at least we might be a little safer uh, in, in a state. And you might want to be a little more cautious uh, when you go out of state, um, depending on where you're going. Um, the other thing that... Uh, it's amazing how quickly the time goes. Uh, the other thing I want to just touch on, Kelly, two other issues uh, that I think are important. Uh, you have coordinated with Marlboro uh, over the past number of years for a hazardous waste day. Uh, and I see that you've got another day coming up on 522 and it's gonna run uh, from nine o'clock in the morning uh, till 12 noon. Um, and it's uh, in Marlboro, uh, 860 Boston Post Road, uh, which is Route 20. Um, and, and as I recall, the last time I went up, there were plenty of signs uh, indicating that you were in the right place and to basically turn here. Uh, tell me about that. Has it gone well over the years? I presume uh, you wouldn't be continuing to, continuing to do it. Um, uh, unless you had a good turnout and we had a number of people uh, that showed up uh, properly. 
uh, disposing of their hazardous waste. So maybe you can just talk a little bit about that as well. Sure, yeah, it's gone exceedingly well um, over the past many, many years. Um, we actually haven't had a hazardous waste day since two falls ago. So what would that bring us? Fall of 2019, um, yep. because COVID hit and we yep. didn't hold our spring event. We did not hold a fall event. So this is the first event that we've had in over a year and a half, maybe two years. Um, and I, I think it's going to be a very busy event. I think that the town people, the townspeople of Hudson, they are very um, good at properly disposing their hazardous waste. And this is a great event. It's free of charge. Um, you come in, you get to see your wonderful health department and um, give us a smile and go on your way. So we're excited to bring that event back um, to the community. Good, good. Um, if people are interested in that, they can go on the uh, Town of Hudson website uh, and, and there's a couple of uh, blurbs about it. And it also advises you what you can bring uh, and what you should bring. Uh, and just one more topic, um, and, and this is really uh, unfortunate. I, I know you were working very hard uh, to, come, to come up with a Hudson curbside and unfortunately, uh, COVID-19 just uh, hit, hit you in the wrong spot and, and kind of brought that to a grinding halt, I think. Uh, maybe you could just give us an idea. I know it actually even came up at town meeting uh, and one of the citizens got up and asked, you know, what the uh, uh, status, you know, of the program was. So can you just give us a status if you would, Kelly? Sure, yeah. So we, we were so excited for that program. That was a, a program that we were going to implement in 2020. I believe it was going to start in August. Um, unfortunately, that came to, as you stated, a grinding halt um, because of COVID-19. Unfortunately, I, I didn't have the time of the day or the time of the year to address to uh, curbside pickup. I am excited to bring that back. Um, Hopefully it will occur sometime in 2020, fiscal year 2022. Um, they are still, our attorney is still um, taking a look at the contracts. So there still are some back end work that need to go through that had previously gone forward and came to a halt because of COVID. Um, so we hope to get that up soon. I don't have a date, but I promise, promise, promise to get the information out as widely as possible um when it does um start and i hope that that's some year sometime in fiscal 2020 2022 i do hope to take a vacation this year and um have a couple weekends off so that would <laughs> well, be nice too well deserved uh kelly and uh I, i'm sure that you know the program came to a halt not because of uh, lack of negotiation uh but rather covid 19. Uh, and yeah. just, it's disrupted, you know, so many things in, in our lives and everything. Uh, I don't know if we're ever going back to the old normal. Uh, I think there's going to be a new normal there uh, will be. for an extended period of time. Uh, and then at some point, that new normal will be the old normal. Uh, yeah. so, we'll, <laughs> so we'll get through it just like we get through everything else. All right. Well, listen, Men's are resilient. Uh, you know, Arthur is usually the guy that watches the clock. Uh, so I've been watching the clock and uh, unfortunately, uh, we've come to an end. Uh, so Kelly, I wanna thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate what you do. Uh, the town of Hudson appreciates what you do and very specifically the board of select. Uh, so thank you, Kelly. And uh, maybe we'll talk again in another four or five months or whatever. That sounds perfect. Maybe I'll have some more updates on the curbside pickup at that point. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me today.